Hello students and welcome to my channel Maths Hub. So today in this video, we will start with a new topic that is Fourier series. So let us first understand for which series, for which functions can we develop Fourier series and who introduced this topic, right? So Fourier series was discovered by Joseph Fourier in the year 1807. So it's an infinite series representation of periodic functions in terms of trigonometric sine and cosine functions. So a Fourier series we can write only for a periodic function, right? So it's a very useful in study of heat conduction, mechanics, concentration of chemicals and pollutants, electrostatics and many other fields. And it does also help us in solving the ordinary and partial differential equations with periodic functions appearing as a non-homogeneous terms. Mm. So as compared to Taylor series expansion, where we can apply it only for continuous or differentiable functions, you can apply Fourier series to any periodic function or a discontinuous function, right? So it's not necessary that the function should be continuous and differentiable. So the only thing that should be present is it should be a periodic function. So if a Fourier series is constructed for one period, it is valid for all the values. So now let us understand in this video, the first and most important thing in Fourier series is the periodic function. So let us stress on periodic function in this video. So what is a periodic function? A function fx is said to be periodic if it satisfies the condition f of x plus t is equal to f of x for some real x and for some positive number t. So in this case, this t is called a, it's a positive number and it is valid for some values and x is valid for all reals, right? So you can see that what is happening to x if I add t, I'm getting back the same function. So this t is called the period of the function and such function is called a periodic function. So here you can see the graph of sine x and you can easily see that this is one cycle formed when we move from 0 to 2 pi. And then again when we move from 2 pi to 4 pi, you can see the graph is similar. It's same. Similarly, if we move from 0 to minus 2 pi, the graph is again same. So that means what is the period of sine x? The period of sine x is 2 pi. So after this interval 2 pi, the graph repeats itself, right? Similarly, in the second graph, you can see that first we move from 0 to 1 and then there is no move. There is a movement from 1 to 2. So this is the graph, right? And then you can see that the same graph is being stretched from 2 to 4. The phenomena is same. It goes from 2 to 3 first at a height of 1 and then it moves horizontally from 3 to 4. Similarly, you can see that this motion is similar. So these type of functions, they are called periodic. So t is the period of fx and all the trigonometric functions like sin x, cos x, secant x, cosecant x, they all have period 2 pi. Whereas tan x and cot x, they have period, period pi. Right? So you can check their graphs for sin x, cos x, secant x, cosecant x and you can see that after the interval of 2 pi, they will behave same. But when you check the graphs for tan x and cot x, you will find that after the period pi, they are behaving in a similar way. Right? So now let us understand some properties of periodic functions. Right? So you should be aware of these properties because we will be randomly requiring these properties in solving the Fourier series expansion. So if t is the period of a function, then any multiple, any integer multiple of t is also a period, right? For example, we have the period of sine x as 2 pi. So we can also say that the period of sine x is 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi, and so on, right? That means, or I can say that 2 pi is the fundamental period, and you multiply 2 pi with any integer, whatever you will get, that is also a period, right? But t will be the fundamental period, right? So this is the first property for a periodic function. So here you can see that if we have cos of x plus 4 pi, 4 pi, you can write it as cos x plus 2 into 2 pi. So you can also write it as cos of x plus 2 pi plus 2 pi, right? So if I check the coordinates, 
this is your angle so let it be angle theta so cos theta plus 2 pi means whatever is theta and you are adding 2 pi to it so you are again moving to the first quadrant isn't it so in the first quadrant angle is positive all angles are positive so we get back cos theta so that is x plus 2 pi and then again what is cos of x plus 2 pi it is again into the first coordinate and it is cos x right so you can see that this property is satisfied f of x plus nt is equal to f of t. now what is the second property the second property says that if we have a function hx as a times fx plus b times gx where both fx and gx they have period t then the function hx will also have the same period that is t that means if i have a composition of two functions having the same period then the new function frame will also have the same period right let's take an example so if i take a function hx as a times cos x plus b times sin x so here you can see that cos x has period 2 pi and sin x also has period 2 pi so the new function framed hx will also have period 2 pi right okay so we have done two properties so we move on to the next property property number three a constant function is periodic for any positive t right so if the function is constant so for example if i draw a graph like this and let it be say this is one this is my ft and this is axis t so here you can see that it is repeating so if you take period as one also after one also the same phenomena is there so you can take period one you can take period half so for any positive integer t the constant function will be a periodic function right okay so now let's move on to the fourth property so the fourth property says that if fx is a periodic function with period t then f of ax with a not equal to zero is a periodic function of period t by a. so that means if the function fx is having period t then if you take a multiple ax then the function ax will have period t by a so you can see that sin 2x is period 2 pi by 2 why because we know that sin x has period 2 pi so if i take sine of 2x according to the property it will have period 2 pi by 2 that is equal to 5 right okay similarly cos 3x it will have period 2 pi by 3 right so the next property the next property says the period of a sum of number of periodic functions is the least common multiple of the period so now what is the difference in this property and the third fourth second property second property that we did was if h of x is a times fx plus b times gx and fx and gx they have functions they have a period as t so hx will also have period t right so both these functions have period t so then we will say that hx also has period t but now the question is that suppose these two functions don't have the same period right so these two functions this has period t1 this has period t2 then the resultant function will have the period the least common multiple of t1 and t2 right so let's take an example and see how it works so for example we have to function find the period of this entire function sin x plus half sin 2x plus 1 by 3 sin 3x plus 1 by 4 sin 4x so let us try to find out the period of each entire functions so sin x has period 2 pi so i'll write here sin x has period 2 pi then sin 2x will have period 2 pi by 2 so that is pi sin 3x will have period 2 pi by 3 and sin 4x will have period 2 pi by 4 which is pi by 2 so now we need to take the common multiple the least common multiple of all these periods right because each function has a different period so let's take the common multiple so 2 pi multiples are 2 pi 4 pi 6 pi and so on right the multiples of pi are pi 
2 pi, 3 pi and so on. The multiples of 2 pi by 3 are 2 pi by 3, 4 pi by 3, 6 pi by 3 that is 2 pi and again so on. And lastly we have pi by 2. So the multiples are pi by 2 pi, then 3 pi by 2, then 4 pi by 2 is 2 pi and so on. So can you see here that the common multiple is 2 pi and this is the least common multiple. So what is the LCM of all these numbers? LCM of 2 pi, pi, pi by 2 pi by 3 and pi by 2. They are all equal to 2. So this composite function will have period 2 pi. Right? So this is how we calculate the period, period of a sum of a number of periodic function. Right? So thank you so much. So we have brushed up the knowledge of periodic function in this video. So in the next video, we will tell I'll tell you about the Fourier series expansion. Right? So thank you so much for listening to me so attentively. And if you like the video, do hit the like button. And those of you who have not subscribed my channel, do subscribe my channel and share with the rest of the candidates. Believe in yourself and you will be able to succeed. Thank you so much.